screwdriver Bobby was moving in the wrong direction on a one-way road. A police officer was standing nearby and noticed the driver, but he didn't stop or find Bobby. Why? Because Bobby was going on foot. We've never mentioned that the cab driver was driving the cab, so this makes perfect sense. Bobby arrived at the local car service. He decided to give his car three coats of paint. Can you guess which coat would go on first? The second, as it's the only coat that can go on the first coat. The mechanic told Bobby, Hey bro, I'm gonna give you a discount if you manage to crack my riddle. So listen carefully. They are the five precious gems of an everyday sort, and all can be found on a tennis court. What are they? Can you solve this mystery? And the correct answer is the vowels, A, E, I, O, and U. Bobby was having a cup of tea when he called the waiter and told him that there was a fly in his tea. The waiter took away the cup and brought another one. But two seconds later, Bobby called the waiter again and said, Hey, that's the same cup of tea. How did he know? Bobby had already put sugar in his tea. Bobby's friend Bill joined him during lunch and offered a bet. If you solve my riddle, I'm going to pay for food. But if you fail, you're the one to pay. Bobby liked riddles and agreed. <laughs> Bill put some matchsticks on the table and said, OK, here's the task. I've arranged matchsticks in a grid so that the first and second row, as well as the first and the third columns, contain 12 matchsticks each. Can you remove four matchsticks and rearrange all the remaining ones so that we're still left with 12 matchsticks in the first row, the second row, the first column, and the third column? Can you help Bobby save some cash? Here's the solution. Bobby went to the restroom after lunch. Unfortunately, the door got locked automatically. Now Bobby needs to enter a password to get out. He found this hint hanging on the wall. A word I know, six letters it contains. Subtract just one, and 12 is what remains. What am I? Can you crack the code? The correct answer is dozens. Bobby was visiting a historical museum. He entered the wrong door and got stuck in a creepy dungeon. There, he found a sufficient supply of buckets filled with food, medicines, and drinking water for a week. But Bobby didn't want to stay there that long. He searched for ways out and found these three doors. A hungry bear and a cub are hiding behind the first door. The second door leads to a wall of fire, and the third door leads to a lake filled with crocodiles. Can you help Bobby choose the right door? The bear will try to protect the cub, even if you offer them all of your food. Swimming through a lake with crocodiles is also a bad idea, but Bobby can distract the crocodiles with food and use water from the lake and the bucket to fight the fire. So he should choose the second door. Bobby found out that his favorite rock band was playing a private concert for VIP clients in a luxury club. He decided to sneak inside the club through the backyard. But unfortunately, Bobby faced a strict guard behind the door. He refused to let Bobby in without a password. Can you help Bobby figure out the password? Yeah. 
take a look at the guard's t-shirt. It's a Rebus. The password is to infinity and beyond. Bobby's friend Mike is an expert on paranormal activity. He invited Bobby for ghost hunting in a creepy old hotel. Their equipment indicated strong signs that a ghost was hiding behind one of the four doors. Each door has an inscription. The sign on door A says, it's behind B or C. Door B says, it's behind A or D. Door C says, it's in here. And door D claims that the ghost isn't here. Mike's psychic powers have told him that three of the inscriptions are false and one is true. Can you guess which door leads to the ghost? Door D leads to the ghost. Why? Well, if the ghost is behind door A, then both B and D are true. If the ghost is behind door B, then both A and D are true. If the ghost is behind door C, then A, C, and D are all true. But if the ghost is behind door D, then the statements on all the other doors are false, except for that on door B. This matches the rules. Mike was standing on a 100-foot, 30-meter ladder. He slipped from the ladder and fell to the ground. But after the fall, he was absolutely fine and not injured. How could that be? Mike was standing at the bottom of the ladder. Bobby's friend brought him to a round desert island by helicopter and left him there. Bobby wanted to spend some time alone, but something went wrong. He met a lonely lion. Bobby and the lion are standing on the island that measures one unit in radius. Both of them can effortlessly run at the speed of one unit maximum. Let's suppose that the lion is very hungry. Will he be able to eat Bobby? And if yes, how long can Bobby survive on the island? There are two possibilities. If Bobby decides to run on the perimeter of the island, the lion will eventually catch him. And here's the second possibility. Bobby doesn't run on the perimeter. This way, he will be using an escape strategy that will work for an infinite time. So, Bobby should probably choose the second strategy and just wait for the helicopter to come back and pick him up. Bobby and his friends went on vacation to a country house. But unfortunately, it was raining heavily. It kept raining for 13 days. When it rained in the morning, the afternoon was beautiful and clear. And when it rained in the afternoon, the next day was blessed with a clear, nice morning. Overall, the guys experienced 11 nice mornings and 12 nice afternoons. Can you find out the total number of days they spent in the country house? The correct answer is 18. And here's why. Let's call clear afternoons X, clear mornings Z, and no rain period O. This equation represents the number of days with rain. X plus C equals 13. And here are the days with clear mornings. Z plus O equals 11. And this equation represents days with clear afternoons. X plus O equals 12. If we solve these three equations, we'll learn that X equals 7, Z equals 6, and O equals 5. So the total number of days is 18. Bobby started his morning by jogging around a park near his house. When he returned, he faced very unpleasant news. Someone had stolen his cab car. He questioned three people standing nearby. Henry said, Sorry about your car, bro. I've been playing video games for 24 hours. I haven't seen anything suspicious because I didn't leave my basement. Rosie said, I'm a gardener. I've been planting daisies in the public area all morning. I think I saw a suspicious man who opened the cab car using a knife. Jack said, 
I saw your car when I went out for groceries, but when I returned home, it was gone. Who's lying? Rosie. She said she planted daisies, but there are only rose bushes in this area. Police officer Frank received an anonymous text message. It revealed an address where Frank could find one of the most dangerous criminals. The police went to check the area. They didn't know what the criminal looked like, but they knew that his name was Dirty Jack, and he was inside the house. The police busted in on a carpenter, a truck driver, a mechanic, and a fireman. All were playing poker. Without any hesitation or communication of any kind, they arrested the fireman. How did they know that he was the criminal? The fireman was the only male in the room. The rest of the poker players were women. Dirty Jack wanted to escape from prison and found three possible ways out. The first exit is guarded by hungry dogs. The second exit has a tricky trap. A cage will fall from the ceiling and catch anyone who steps on the floor in this room. And an angry guard is hiding behind the third exit. No prisoner can escape from him. Which door should he choose? The second one. He can throw his boot to activate the trap and then just walk around it. Dirty Jack got out of prison and found himself in the middle of the ocean. He landed in a cave underwater and got trapped. Stones are hanging above him, and he has only two options to escape. A huge jellyfish is waiting on the first path, and a hungry shark is waiting on the second path. Which way should he go? Dirty Jack should choose the second option. Take a closer look. This shark has a go vegan tattoo. Therefore, it won't hurt a human. So he can easily climb up through the hole in the cave above and escape. What will be the resulting figure if we fold this open cube? The correct answer is A. One day, Amy decided to explore an abandoned house in her neighborhood. She went inside by herself. The place was eerie and strange. She started by exploring the garden, but got distracted looking at some flowers and suddenly fell into a 20-foot deep pool. The pool was empty, but when she fell inside, she activated a sensor that said the pool would be filled with water in only five minutes. Amy was scared because she was a bad swimmer. She looked around and noticed a six-foot-long rope lying at the bottom of the pool. She also saw a four-foot-wide wooden barrel and a three-foot-tall metal safe. Amy was six feet tall, and she managed to get out of the pool safely. Can you guess how she did it? Well, once the water started rising, Amy held tight to the wooden barrel. It helped her stay afloat and get out of the pool safe and sound. She could only enter the house through a door with a five-digit combination lock. Amy looked around for some clues and found a piece of paper with five digits, 81169. She tried this code, but it didn't work. Soon, she realized what was wrong. Can you figure it out as well? She was holding the paper upside down. The correct code is 69118. Finally, she got inside the main house. In the living room, she discovered that the mansion was not abandoned after all. There were four ladies waiting for her. Each of them offered to guide Amy around the house. Which woman do you think is the safest choice? Well, the first woman doesn't cast a shadow, so she's probably a vampire. 
The third woman has a vampire bite on her neck, which means she's going to turn into a vampire pretty soon. The fourth lady has snakes in her hair, which means a big no-no. So Amy is left with lady number two as her guide. The lady led Amy to another room. She gave the girl a chocolate bar and told her she had a challenge for her. The guide was going to perform a few tricks for Amy, and after each trick, she needed to give the guide one-seventh of the chocolate bar. But Amy was only allowed to cut the bar into two parts. It was also impossible to break the bar or cut it without a special knife. In this case, what is the best strategy for cutting the chocolate bar? Amy should make two cuts, dividing the bar into three pieces. The first piece should be one-seventh of the bar, the second piece two-sevenths of the bar, and the third one four-sevenths of the bar. The guide performed a crazy magic trick and Amy gave her one-seventh of the bar. After the second trick, she gave the lady two-sevenths of the bar and asked her to give the one-seventh piece back. After the third trick, she gave the guide the smallest piece again. Then, after the fourth trick, Amy took away the first two pieces and gave the woman the four-seventh piece. After the fifth trick, she added the one-seventh piece again. After the sixth trick, the girl took away the one-seventh piece and gave the guide the two-seventh piece. And after the grand finale, she gave the woman the smallest part of the bar again. After she finished performing tricks, the lady locked Amy inside the room. In a bizarre twist, the door she had entered through disappeared, and the girl could only see another door in the corner of the room. That door was sealed with a letter combination lock. Amy looked around the room and found a slip of paper. That's what was written on it. P plus 3, N minus 1, B minus 1, N plus 4, S plus 1. What's the code word? The code word is SMART. The key to this riddle was hidden in the alphabet. P plus the following three letters is S. N minus one letter is M, and so on. Amy left this room and found a staircase leading to the basement. She went down and saw that her guide was downstairs waiting for her. The guide told her she needed to choose between the three drinks on the table in front of them. Only one of the drinks was not poisoned. The drinks were tea with sugar, cappuccino, and hot chocolate. What should Amy pick? If it was indeed sugar in the tea, it would have already melted completely, but the sugar cubes are still in there. The foam on top of the cappuccino looks suspiciously green. It's probably unsafe to drink it. So Amy should opt for the hot chocolate. The guide opened the back door of the house and told her to leave and never come back. Amy found herself in the street and saw a car standing nearby with its engine already running. She got inside and decided to drive back to her house. However, it was so foggy that she got lost and ended up in a deserted town. By then, she was hungry, thirsty, and really tired. Suddenly, Amy saw three doors leading to different houses. It was written that behind the first door, there was loads of food. Behind the second door, there was all the water she could drink. And behind the third door, there was a stash of a million dollars. Which door should Amy open first? Well, the car door, duh! Amy managed to find her way back to her hometown and arrived home in the early morning. As soon as she entered her house, she noticed her laptop was missing. It looked like someone had broken into her house because there were footprints on the floor leading to the living room window. Amy called the police and told them about the case. In a day's time, the detective gathered four possible suspects. The first person was Jack, Amy's childhood friend. He said he hadn't left his house over the past few days because he'd been working on an important project for his work. Then there was Robert, Amy's next-door neighbor. He said he'd been taking care of his garden the entire week, but he hadn't seen anyone break into Amy's place. Mallory, Amy's co-worker, said she'd been away on vacation during the past week. And Susanna, Amy's housekeeper, said that last time she'd come to clean Amy's place, the laptop had still been there. The detective knew immediately who had done it. How could he tell?
Look at Robert's garden. He said he'd been taking care of it, but the flowers are all withered and dry. Amy's friend Bill called her saying that he had a surprise for her. He said he had won several tickets to the concert of Amy's favorite pop band. He would give her a ticket if she figured out the answer to a very difficult riddle. Amy managed to crack the riddle and got the ticket. The riddle went like this. You don't have them when you're born, but you get them later. In several years, you don't have them anymore. But then, they come again, in a different form. Many years later, they might leave you again. What are they? They are your teeth. At 11 a.m., Amy got a call from her boss, Tom. He was in distress because a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but nowhere to be found in the morning. Amy immediately went there to question the employees. She soon had three suspects. Eliza said that he'd spent the previous evening at the movies. Mason took his girlfriend to dinner. And Evelyn visited an art gallery. It didn't take Amy long to understand who was lying. Why? It was Elijah. Take a close look at his ticket. It isn't torn, which means he didn't really go to the movies. Tom was a college student. He worked as a delivery guy in his spare time to earn his living. One day, he got a task to deliver a mysterious black box to a seemingly abandoned lab. He picked up the box from an office building downtown. But when Tom tried to leave, he saw three doors. There was a bottomless pit behind the first door. Behind the second door, there was a tiny elevator. And the third door led to a room with no exit. What should Tom choose? Door number two is fine. Even if Tom is afraid of confined spaces, he can still get to the street and escape. Tom managed to break free and decided to deliver the box as soon as possible. At some point, he stopped to tie his shoelaces and put the box on a bench nearby. But when he finished with his shoelaces, he noticed that the box had disappeared. Tom looked around and saw a thief running away with the box. They were wearing a mask, so Tom couldn't see their face. Tom followed the thief to the library and saw four people in the reading room. Can you help Tom decide which one is the thief? This woman. The thief had a scar on her left hand. Tom asked the woman to return the box. She said, OK, but first, you have to solve my riddle. Tomorrow, I am surely here. Yesterday, you can find me as well. Today, I am gone. What am I? Tom gave his answer. The woman gave him the box and ran away. What did he say? The correct answer is the letter R. Tom was very hungry, so he decided to buy some food at a coffee shop nearby. The name of the coffee shop was Seven Lanterns, but Tom only noticed five lanterns hanging outside. Shelly, the owner of this coffee shop, knew about this mistake and could easily correct it, but she didn't. Why? When the wind blew away two lanterns some time ago, Shelly wanted to replace them. But before she could do that, she noticed that more and more people had started to come into her cafe. They told her that two lanterns were missing, and then they usually stayed to have some coffee. Tom bought a sandwich, left it on a table, and went to the bathroom to wash his hands. When he came back, he saw three people standing by his table. And the sandwich was gone. Can you guess who ate Tom's food? This guy over there, he left some crumbs. Tom decided to take a bus to get to the lab in time, but as soon as he took a seat, Tom noticed a vampire among the passengers. Can you see the vampire too? This woman over there. She's wearing an oversized hoodie to hide her sensitive skin from sunlight. It doesn't necessarily mean that she's a vampire, but the absence of any shadow is 100% proof. When Tom tried to pay for his bus ticket, he realized he had left his wallet at the coffee shop. Luckily, the driver said, I won't call the police if you can solve my riddle. 
Tom agreed to this deal and listened to the riddle attentively. I make loud sounds when I change. After I change, I get bigger, but way less. What am I? Have you guessed? It's popcorn. Tom came back to the coffee shop to get his wallet back. Josh, the barista, claimed that he hadn't seen any wallets. Shelly, the owner, said that she had recently seen a suspicious customer with two wallets. And Bill, the customer with two wallets, said that the second wallet belonged to his wife. Who's lying? The barista. Take a look at his feet. He's standing on Tom's wallet. Shelly and Josh didn't want to involve the police, and Tom suggested playing a game. He told the barista, I won't call the police if you solve my riddle. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What is it? Unfortunately, the barista couldn't figure out the right answer and went to jail. The correct answer is footsteps. Tom was running out of time and decided to get to the lab by taxi. But his application went crazy and sent Tom this weird maze. The instructions said, if you want to know the numbers on the license plate of your taxi, solve this riddle. Can you help Tom? If we go through this maze from start to finish, we'll get to 517. Tom found his taxi and hit the road. The driver stopped in the middle of nowhere and took out a weird gadget. He opened a portal that transported Tom to the top of a mountain. There, he met his own evil twin from a parallel universe, and this twin wanted the box. Tom started running and fell into an ice cave with three tunnels. There was a hungry cougar inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel was full of bats that fed on human blood. And a dozen evil wizards were waiting for Tom inside the third tunnel. Which way should he choose? The second one. The bats are sleeping because it's daytime. Tom reached a little village in the woods and hid in a cabin. But then, he noticed something very creepy and ran away from that village immediately. What did he see? This glove over there is not actually a glove. This cabin probably belongs to zombies, not people. Tom found some road, stopped a truck, and asked the driver to take him to the nearest airport. But the man asked Tom to solve a riddle first. I am known to bring bad luck when you see me in the dark, but I don't like the rain. But one thing's for sure, you won't hear me bark. What am I? What should Tom answer to get a ride? A black cat. At the airport, Tom tried to buy a plane ticket back to New York, but he didn't have any money. Suddenly, Lily, a famous blogger and influencer, invited Tom into the business class lounge. She was celebrating her birthday with her friends. Unfortunately, their magic knife could only make three cuts. They couldn't figure out how to split the cake into eight pieces. Can you? First, they should cut the cake in half. Then they can make another cut so that there are four equal pieces. Now they need to cut the cake sideways through the middle so that it has two layers. Now everybody has a piece except for Tom. But Lily gave him a more generous gift. She bought the guy a ticket to New York. Finally, Tom brought the mysterious box to the abandoned lab. He noticed a metal door and tried to open it. But the door was locked. A red sign appeared on a little screen next to the door. It asked for a password. There was a hint on the wall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Can you help Tom crack the code? There are 17 spaces. After reading the number out loud, you'll get it. Type number two, then number four, three times. Number six, five times. And after that, seven eights. Voila, the light changed to green and Tom entered the room. A scientist met Tom inside the lab. He locked all the doors as soon as Tom got inside. The man told Tom, you're not going anywhere until I make sure the delivery is fine. But the box was empty.
The scientist got furious and offered Tom to choose between three dangerous options to escape. There was a room with a wet floor and hanging wires behind the first door. Hungry monsters were waiting behind the second door. And there was a portal leading to an open space behind the third door. What door should Tom choose to survive? The first one. The wires don't touch the floor and he can easily crawl under them. The scientist congratulated Tom and offered him another riddle to test his intelligence. Take away my first letter and I still sound the same. Take away my last letter, I still sound the same. Take away my middle letter and I will still sound the same. I am a five letter word. What am I? Do you know the correct answer? Empty. The scientist was satisfied and confessed that he had invented pills of immortality. He promised to give them to Tom if he succeeded in choosing the right box. There were three boxes and only one of them contained the pills. Each box had a statement on it, but only one was true. Can you help understand where the pills are? If the pills were in the first box, there would be two true statements. And if the pills were in the third box, there would also be two true statements. But since we only need one true statement, the pills can only be inside the second box. Tom opened the box and saw four pills. Two of them were red and two were blue. The scientist explained that Tom should eat one red pill and one blue pill at the same time to gain immortality. An overdose could cause the opposite effect. The scientist decided to give Tom four pills just in case one of them got lost. Tom put the pills in his pocket and left the lab. Suddenly, his evil twin opened a portal and grabbed Tom. He blindfolded him and threw him into an airtight room. Tom could move and had some oxygen, but for a very short time. So, he took the pills out. Unfortunately, he couldn't distinguish the colors or tell any difference between the four pills. What should Tom do to become immortal and save his life? The guy should break the pills and eat half of each pill. Julie worked in a Prada store in New York. Everything there was expensive and most clients paid by credit card. But one day, she got a client who got a purse, a wallet, and a dress. All that cost her $3,990. But the woman decided to pay in cash. Julie refused to sell the items to the client and called the police. Why? Tried to use to pay. They are two $2,000 bills, which don't exist. The police of Atlanta were notified that a prisoner had escaped from Chicago and taken the plane to Atlanta. Of course, an officer was sent to the airport to find the prisoner and capture them. The police officer spotted three people who looked similar to the criminal. Take a look at the passengers. Which one should be arrested? The prisoner must be this guy. He's the only one who doesn't have any luggage with him. Probably because he was running away and had none. In a small town, a grand robbery happened. Someone robbed a jewelry store in the local mall. At 6.03 p.m., the lights in the whole mall went off for eight minutes. When the lights came back on, the most expensive jewelry pieces were missing from the shelves. The police interrogated three main suspects. Jack said, I was picking out a present for my son in an electronics store when the lights went off. I was so confused as anyone else. Fred said, I wasn't even in the mall at the time. I have no idea what you're talking about. And Stacy said, I was in the bathroom fixing my makeup. I didn't even notice the lights went out. Who is the main suspect? It's Stacy. She said that she hadn't noticed that the light had gone out. But they went off everywhere, including the bathrooms. She would have noticed it, so she's lying. Ava has always wanted to get a cat. 
but her mom wouldn't allow her to have a pet. So, when one day she found a kitten on the street, she brought it home, but kept it a secret. She succeeded for two weeks, but one morning, she went down to the kitchen. Have you been hiding a cat in your room? Her mother asked. How did she figure it out? Ava is wearing shorts. Her legs are all scratched, and these scratches are what gave her away. During Halloween, all kinds of creatures flooded a little town, blending in with the citizens. Weeks passed, but some of them stayed, pretending to be humans. The town's detective could catch the remaining ones. He's been tracking a vampire, and he has three suspects. All of them only come out at night. Which one of them is the vampire? This guy is pale, but it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a vampire. This guy is wearing a silver chain, so he can't be one. But this guy doesn't have a reflection. This is definitely not a human. Ned works in a club, and his job is to check people's ID cards and not let inside any suspicious people or people below the age of 21. Take a look at these three ID cards and figure out who isn't supposed to enter the club. Okay, here's the first guest for you. What can you say about this man? Don't let him in. The person in the photo is totally different. It's not this guy's ID card. Okay, here's the next one. Keep your eyes wide open. Do you see anything suspicious? She seems fine. Let her in. Okay, the next one. Check it out and make your decision. In or out? Las Vegas is written with a W. It's a typo, which is unacceptable for official documents. This ID must be fake. Here's the next guest for you to examine. What's your verdict? Will you let her in? She seems fine to me. It must be safe to let her in. What about this girl? Is anything off here? She seems fine to me too. Green light. Okay, the last guest. In or out? Look, the woman in the photo has a brown right eye and a green left eye. The real woman has a brown left eye and a green right eye. This is too suspicious. I wouldn't let her in. Amelia is a huge modern art enthusiast, and she wants to take her siblings to a new exhibition. A ticket for one person costs $18. A ticket for two costs $30. And a ticket for three costs $45. If she wants to pay as little as possible, should she invite her two siblings at once or go with each of them separately? It's cheaper if the three of them go together. It'll cost $45. If Amelia went with each of them separately, she would have to pay $30 twice, so she'd pay $60 in total. Ellery has a sweet tooth. And every Friday, she goes candy shopping for the week. Tonight, she bought chocolate bars, jelly beans, and gummy bears. She has all chocolate bars, but two. All packs of jelly beans, but four. And all packs of gummy bears, but four. How many pieces of each type of sweets did she buy?
Chocolate bars are all but two, which means that there are two packs of jelly beans and gummy bears together. So there's one pack of jelly beans and one pack of gummy bears. Chocolate and gummy bears are four together, so there are three chocolate bars. Elu is a fairy living in her magical forest. Every day, she takes the same route for a morning flight to the lake. One Friday, she was flying to the lake when she met some other creatures moving towards her. There were two elves, three fairies, and a gnome. How many creatures were going to the lake that Friday morning? Just Elu. Everyone else was going in the opposite direction. Lily and Della are twin sisters. Both girls failed their history test at school and their mother made them study all weekend. In the middle of the day, Mrs. McAdams came to check on the girls. Take a look at Lily and Della. Which of them hasn't been studying? Della, the book she's reading isn't a history book, it's physics. She must have grabbed the closest book as soon as she heard her mother's footsteps. A rich lady was booking into one of the best hotels in the city. When she got her key, she noticed that her bags had been stolen. The police interrogated three main suspects. Mr. Collins said, I wouldn't steal anything. I'm rich. I live in the penthouse on the 20th floor. Mrs. Jones said, I've just returned to the hotel. I've been out all day. And Mrs. Smith said, I wouldn't steal anything. I have too much stuff myself. Mr. Collins seems shady. He can't live on the 20th floor because there are only 18 floors in the hotel. Amber participated in a game show and she won. She got three exclusive gifts, a Givenchy purse, Armani sunglasses, and a Porsche. But here's a catch. She is to pick her presents herself by choosing between the original and a replica. You need to help her pick the correct prize. Here are two Givenchy purses. One of them is the original, and the other is a replica. Which one should Amber choose? This one, it has the correct logo, so it must be the original. Now, there are two seemingly identical pairs of sunglasses, but only one of them is the original from Giorgio Armani. Which one? This one, with the correct logo. And finally, the Porsche. Let's see if you remember their logo. Yes, this is the one. Great job. A hat and scarf cost $110. The hat is $100 more expensive than the scarf. How much does the scarf cost? $5. It means that the hat is $105, which is exactly $100 more than the scarf. Mia was a shop assistant on a giant cruise liner. Once, she found an expensive watch in the boutique where she worked and announced it on the radio. Soon, four people showed up in the store. Each of them claimed it was their watch. Mia looked at all of them attentively and realized who the watch belonged to. Can you figure it out too? This man does have a watch tan line, but it's much bigger than the watch Mia found. This young girl already has a watch on her left hand. Why would she wear the second one? Mm. The elderly lady must be very absent-minded. Her dog is wearing her watch as a collar. The watch must belong to the teenager. <laughs> Nick was an experienced skydiver, but one day something went wrong. A strong gust of wind brought him to the forest. The man found himself among trees with no food or water. 
Soon, Nick saw four roads in front of him. One led to a supermassive black hole that swallowed everything that got close. The second road ended in a sea full of sharks. The third road led to a mountain that was impossible to climb over. And the fourth road ended in a bottomless abyss. Which road should Nick take? He should follow the third road. No one says he has to climb over the mountain. He can simply go around it. During which month do people sleep the least? During February, it only has 28, maximum 29 days. A man is on the run from the police after he stole three massive gold bars. 30 pounds each. Oh, no. At some point, he reaches a long bridge that can support only 260 pounds. The man weighs 200 pounds. How can he transport all three gold bars in one go? He has to walk across the bridge while juggling the bars. It means that at any time, only two bars will be on the bridge, since the third one will always be in the air. Look attentively at these three men carrying a log. One of them is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the man in the middle. For one thing, he's wearing a suit, which is a strange choice of clothing for such a task. Plus, his face is quite relaxed, and his eyes are open. It doesn't look as if carrying the lug feels like hard work for him. One evening, Emma went to take out the trash from her coffee shop. She was about to leave when she spotted something dark in the corner behind the trash bins. It was a young woman, and she was unconscious. Emma rushed to her. The girl's bag and smartphone were lying nearby on the ground. The first person on the contact list was named Big Sis. Emma called the number and heard a female voice. I found your sister lying on the ground. It seems someone hit her on the head. What? The woman was shocked and promised to come immediately. Next, Emma called the police. The sister and police officers arrived at the same time. Arrest this woman. She's behind the attack. Oh. And Emma pointed at the sister. Why did she say so? She didn't tell the sister where to come. How did she know the address? Oh. There are four cups on the counter, all of them upturned and hiding the same number of sweets underneath. Near each of the cups, there is a sign that says how many sweets are under it. The signs are five or six, seven or eight, six or seven, and seven or five. Only one of these signs is correct. How many sweets are there under each cup? Since only one sign is correct, the right number can't appear twice. Otherwise, more than one sign will be correct. It means that there are eight sweets under each cup. Luke took part in a scientific experiment, but something went terribly wrong. He ended up in a place where there was nothing but three portals. One of them led to a polar desert in Antarctica. The second one opened into a volcanic crater filled with molten lava. And behind the third portal, there was the age of dinosaurs, with huge diplodocuses roaming around. Which portal should the man choose? Luke would freeze in no time in a polar desert. Molten lava isn't even an option. But diplodocuses are totally harmless to people. They only eat plants. Look at the picture attentively and say which of these people is left-handed. It's the waiter. It's easier for a left-handed person to hold the tray in the right hand and deal with the food and drinks with the left, dominant hand. <laughs> Detective Henry Taylor was getting ready for work when he heard screams from his neighbor's house. He rushed there. The door was locked. The man had to kick it several times before it opened. He found his neighbor, Miss Anderson, in the living room. She was tied to a chair. Oh, I'm so happy you heard me shouting. An hour ago, a man knocked on my door and said he was an electrician. 
but as soon as I let him in, he tied me up and took all the priceless paintings I had got from my grandfather, and then he just ran away. Hmm. Detective Taylor had to arrest the woman for staging the theft. How did he know? When he tried to get into the house, the door was latched from the inside. Who could do it if Miss Anderson was tied up and the thief supposedly ran out of the house in a hurry? You have five pieces of chain, and each of them is made up of three links. You have to make a long chain out of these five pieces. Welding an open link will cost you $3, and breaking a link open is $1. Can you make a long chain if you have only $15? First, take one piece of chain and break all of its three links open. It'll cost you $3, then link the remaining four pieces of the chain with these open links. Welding these links will cost you another $9. In total, you'll only pay $12. In the middle of a long flight, two passengers stood up and started to threaten the crew and passengers. They demanded $1 million in a helicopter. One of the criminals had a pilot's license and could fly a copter. When the plane landed at the nearest airport, the passengers got everything they had requested. A case full of money and a helicopter. But when they got inside, they didn't manage to fly away and were captured by the police. Why couldn't they start the machine if the helicopter didn't have any technical problems? The helicopter was okay, but there was no fuel in its tank. Michael got lost when he was walking in the forest. After hours of wandering around, he finally saw a weird-looking house that seemed to be deserted. Still, the guy decided to try his luck and ask for directions. But when he entered the house, the door shut behind his back with a loud bang, and he heard a voice, You've entered my home uninvited. You won't leave it easily. Oh, no. After that, Michael found himself in a room with three doors. The voice told him that only one of those doors led to freedom. Behind the first door, there were starving wolves. The second door hid a furious werewolf. And behind the third door, there was a huge, raging campfire. Which door is safe? Michael'd wait until the campfire goes out and get out of the house through the third door.